Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, providing more than 41,000 jobs in the production of wood pallets, railroad ties, white oak barrels, hardwood floors, and more. Details at choosewood.com. From St. Louis Public Radio. This is St. Louis on the Air. I'm Sarah Fenske. The band Foxing has cultivated fans around the world with artful indie rock. It's impossible not to like these tracks. What's perhaps most unusual about Foxing's success is that they've achieved it without moving away from St. Louis. And with the band's fourth album coming out Friday, that's tomorrow, the band is gearing up to celebrate in a big St. Louis way. For the first time ever, they're playing the pageant next week. And joining us today to explain why that feels like a big deal, even though they've traveled all over the world, are all three members of Foxing. And that includes guitarist Eric Hudson. Eric, welcome. Thank you for having me. And we're also joined today by drummer John Helwig. John, welcome. Thank you. Happy to be here. And vocalist Connor Murphy. Welcome. Hey, how's it going? So, Connor, your pageant show comes up a week from Saturday. And I got to ask, how is it that Foxing has never played the pageant before? It's just never been in the cards for us. We've I've, we've certainly tried to play. We've tried to open for other bands there. Um, tours that we usually go on where we support other bands somehow tend to never come through St. Louis. It's very mm-hmm. strange. But uh, we played next door at Del Mar Hall a couple times. Um, we've just, it's never been in the cards for us to play the pageant, which is crazy because we've been there so many times. We all grew up in St. Louis or the area, and we've seen, like, formative shows there. And it's somehow just we've never played there. So Eric, this venue was, was a big deal for you? Definitely. Um, growing up, as Connor was saying, um, I've seen so many bands there that I looked up to uh, as, a, as a young person, and I saw a lot of shows there that I still remember how it made me feel to kind of go there. And, and um, I remember one specifically, uh, seeing the band called Explosions in the Sky, uh, and that was kind of like a real religious experience for me, uh, getting to see them. And so getting to now play the same stage that all these acts have played is um, really, I think, really important to all of us. Yeah, John, I understand you've seen more shows there than anyone. Uh, I I wouldn't put that out of the realm of possibility. I think, <laughs> I mean, I've I've been around longer on on the planet than uh, both Eric and Connor. But uh, yeah, I mean, I remember going to shows at the pageant as far back as like middle school. And just, like, the fact that we're going to be headlining a show there is, like, huge to me. It's, like, kind of a bucket list is, like, a growing St. Louis musician. It's something that you never really, like, think, like, I mean, I was in my parents' garage, like, with my first band and never thought, oh, I'm going to be playing at the pageant someday. It's always, like, that would be cool if it happened, but now it's actually happening. It's kind of tripping us out a bit. So the new album that you're going to be playing from, this drops tomorrow. This is called Draw Down the Moon. Connor, what's the inspiration for this album? So uh, the original thing that <laughs> that like sparked uh, the concept or the theme for the whole thing was I watched a Adult Swim show um, called Joe Parra Talks You to Sleep. 
which is a, a comedy thing. It's this comedian, Joe Para. And it's supposed to be like, it's this 10 hour long thing that's supposed to be something meditative to listen to while you fall asleep. It's this guy that has a soothing voice and he just tells kind of boring stories. <laughs> But at one point, he talks about uh, Stephen Hawking and the idea of Stephen Hawking cheating on his wife. Mm. And he. Which did happen. Right. And he talks about how Stephen Hawking looks up into the sky all day and all night and thinks about how small and insignificant he is. And then, uh, what does it matter if one man cheats on his wife when we are so insignificant? But then, following that same train of thought, if we are so small and insignificant uh, and you found somebody that you love and that trusts you, why would you want to hurt them? Um, and so after I watched that, I think I called Eric like immediately after. And I was like, I think this could be like the idea of the entire album. So what it ended up being is this album about cosmic significance. You know, when you look up into the sky and say, you know, I'm so small compared to everything. Um, and trying to take that on and say, uh, well, what is our significance? Um, and I think what we posit in the album is that we are not significant, but the connections we have to each other, to the people we love, to, you know, the places that we love. St. Louis, for instance, for us is a, a huge part of the album. Um, and then, you know, philosophies and, and kind of themes, uh, our connection to that is the significance. Um, so that's what we try to do. We have, you know, 10 songs on the album. Each one is kind of a different theme um, representing like a concept. So... I, I just love your description of that. I mean, it's it's such an important thing for people to think about, and so few people do. Um, so let's play the title track from this album. This is Draw Down the Moon. And that is Draw Down the Moon from the band Foxing. All three members of the band are here with us today in studio. It's really exciting. This is just a beautiful song, and, and the tracks I've been able to hear on this album are, are so beautiful. There's a lyric from this. I'm never going to stop loving you. If I could, I would have done it by now. We circle like salmon in holy pools, gathering speed until we can't slow down. That's such a beautiful lyric. I have to ask who's responsible for that one. I'm I'm the culprit. Okay, tell us tell us what the thinking there is. I think I mean the the first part of that line is very much just you know a very straightforward sentiment of uh, you know loving somebody and and feeling like if you could have stopped loving them or if you could have given up on them you you would have. Um, Love already. is hard. It's, yeah, exactly. <laughs> sometimes you just want to move on. Yeah, it's kind of it, it, you know that's a, a huge part of the album is kind of the resilience of. Uh, relationships or connections and love, whether it be platonic or romantic. And uh, the second part of that line actually comes from um, a, a pagan, a neo-pagan ritual um, that it's it's like a very long thing that's essentially like a, an affirmation. Um, and it comes from the book Drawing Down the Moon, which is where we got our title mm -hmm. uh, from. Uh, it's by Margot Adler, and it's uh, the the end of the book. Um, there's a you know a few different rituals, uh, just kind of like affirmations or actual rituals in there, and uh, they in part of one of them, it contains this really beautiful line about the circling salmon and kind of uh, sort of representing this like uh, cycle of life and cycle of love um, with your you know your fellow humans, and so mm -hmm. I kind of. I tried to wedge it in there, kind of shoehorn it in as this, uh, because it's just a line that really spoke to me, um, to try to show this idea of like uh, that resilience of, of love and connection with another person, romantic sense. It's like, you know, you're like two 
uh, salmon just circling each other or like two dogs kind of chasing each other's tails, uh, like not really knowing exactly why you do it, but being pulled in that direction anyway. It's a great image of love. And I got to say, as I'm listening to this song now, I can't help but have images in my head of Andre de Shields. This is, of course, the great actor. He was in St. Louis this summer uh, with the St. Louis Shakespeare Festival, uh, performing in the title role of King Lear. You guys somehow got him to star in your video. I have to hear. Um, John, was it hard to, to get Andre de Shields to agree to be a part of this? Uh, not for me, because I had nothing to do with it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think that one's best left for uh, Connor to explain. Well, really, what that came from was just uh, we had we had these ideas for each of our videos. And they the biggest thing was that they were all supposed to follow this narrative that wasn't necessarily like a linear, you know, um, beginning, middle, end, but it was supposed to be kind of this narrative around a character that we created, um, which is, uh, you know, this costume character that Andre's playing and that I play in the other videos. Anyway, we were trying to figure out the best kind of setting and uh, production for the title track that we just listened to. Um, and I got this idea in my head that I think it would be really cool if uh, we worked with a stage production of some sort. And I didn't have uh, Shakespeare in the Park Festival in mind. I didn't have Andre in mind, but I was just kind of, uh, you know, putzing around with the idea of what if, uh, you know, we kind of had this meta narrative of like the stage is here, but also we break the stage. Um, and so at first I was calling around to people, I, Eric and I went to Webster University, so I was calling around mm -hmm. to people to see like, hey, could the conservatory do something like this? And then on the side, I just like, I was like, eh, I'll just shoot my shot. I just uh, emailed just a kind of like a hello at Shakespeare <laughs> in the Park Festival. And Colin O'Brien, who uh, I don't know his exact role in the festival, but um, essentially like a... a a, a higher up. Yeah. <laughs> uh, just so happened to also be somebody that booked shows in St. Louis for a long time. So, of course, he knows about Fox A. Exactly. So, he got back to me immediately and said, like, I want to make this happen. This sounds great. And he was the one that actually brought up, uh, you know, this is going to be King Lear, which is great because it's like, oh, we can pull all these connections between the song and King Lear and our album concept. Uh, and then he said, also, Andre de Shields is going to be uh, the lead in this. And uh, I think we could get him to do this because he's really cool. And I was just like, all right, well, I don't think that's going to happen, but great. Uh, he got back so quickly, though, and said, like, love the song, love the idea, I want to be in your video. And seriously, across the board, he was... I mean, these two probably... <laughs> he was awesome. He, yeah. he was not a diva. Not at no. all. No, I mean, he, he definitely took it very seriously and it's like so in between shots you know he'd be kind of mouthing words or like practicing what he was doing so we'd have to like there's a couple times where we were like uh we were like uh okay you ready andre and he just wouldn't say anything because he was like just working on stuff we're like oh, he okay. was in his moment exactly right. exactly but but no i mean he was he was really great to work with and he even specifically said at one point that he like felt like he could use it to brag to his other kind of broadway friends like he's like i'm the first one who's in a music video wow. this is so cool yeah, yeah so that's amazing that he had that perspective i yeah. mean this is a guy who's won a tony and a emmy and a what's all the anyway a grammy and he's a, a huge right. deal he's got a lifetime achievement awards it, the, the thing about andre is that he carries himself as somebody who demands respect and he carries himself in, in a way that I've never encountered with anybody I've ever met. Like, and it's because I've never met somebody that's like an Oscar away from an EGOT, you know, like yeah. he is, and he's been working in Broadway for 55 years. He is just a force of nature. Uh, but at the same time, he has so much respect for everybody around him. There mm -hmm. was, a, a, before we shot the thing, uh, he and I had like a two hour conversation in his trailer. And I should mention, this was your directorial debut, is that right? It, sort of. I, I co directed this and the other two videos with uh, two other people, Hayden Molinarolo and Dylan Schnitker. So you're directing Andre De Shields. <laughs> yeah, I, that, I, that was my biggest uh, job in it, was to coordinate with him, which is very intimidating. But having that two hour conversation with him actually provided so much context. Because at one point, I think the. I, I called Eric afterwards. I was like, I think he might have just changed my life. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> but it, at one point, I kept saying things like, um, 
and we'd like you to wear this costume, but only if you want to, you don't have to, you can wear whatever you want. And he would say, what do you want me to wear? Hmm. And I would be like, oh, I guess I want you to do this. And I would do, I would keep asking those questions saying like, unless you have a better idea. And he finally just cut me off and was just like, you, I am a tool for you to use in this video. Uh, you are the creator. I am an actor. This is an actor's role. And he kind of just put it all in perspective in this way that was like, yes, like we are making the thing. You are a part of it. We keep holding you up to this regard of like, we need to tiptoe around you, but we really don't. And I think that that is just, I think he is the best, uh, I think he's the coolest human that I've ever come into contact with. And he also, I mean, he he helped you own your vision. Exactly. To not be apologetic for what you want to do. That's huge. Well, and that's something that I think as Midwesterners that we do constantly. It's just, <laughs> oh, I hope it's okay if I <laughs> do this. Yeah. yeah, when you're the director. And yeah, he, right. yeah, now you can own that. So are you going to be going forward? You're going to be telling people, hey, this is the way we do it. I think I already have been a little bit, at least in the context of that video, I felt like I was uh, commanding things when they needed to be, and not in like an overzealous way. I didn't, the world know. needs somebody to to I, do that. Well, it, at the end of the day, how many people did we have there? There was like I don't know, twenty people, yeah, milling around mm-hmm. doing stuff. And it's like if we just are all being Midwesterners and going like, if if that's okay, then nothing's going to get done. <laughs> we had like a very strict timeline too, so yeah, I don't know. Changed my life, truly. I think, man, that is a great pep talk. And uh, look, I'm feeling bad here. We were planning to play more music from this album. We are very close to being out of time. We have time for just one more question. And I guess this is, I'm going to tell people, they need to go to Bandcamp to listen to this album for themselves. We're not just going to give this away on the radio for free. <laughs> yeah, maybe that's a good thing for y'all. I don't know. <laughs> oh, that sounds great. i got to ask in our final minute here, though, um, I mentioned how rare it is that a band that's as big as you guys is still in St. Louis. Do you feel like you can continue to do what you're doing at the level you're doing at and continue to do it here? I think so. I, I think that the world has sort of gone away from needing to be in a place like New York or L.A. I think that the one big benefit of having an online world is that you can do things anywhere. And St. Louis, I think, is a great place to be a creative. And you're proving that. I mean, you guys can tour from here, but but everything else happens. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, it's exciting. And this new album, this is Draw Down the Moon by the band Foxing. I think people are really going to be into this. I want to encourage people. It drops tomorrow. They can get more information on Bandcamp. And also, who doesn't want to see that video with Andre DeShield? So we're going to get that up on our, our Twitter. That's at STL on air. If people want to see that for themselves, we'll also get it there on our website, stlpr.org. Eric Hudson, a guitarist for Foxing, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. And Connor Murphy, vocalist, thank you. Thank you. And John Helwig, drummer. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Side by side. St. Louis on the Air is a production of St. Louis Public Radio. Understanding starts here. find yourself regularly listening to episodes of St. Louis on the Air? Suggest us to a friend you think might enjoy our conversations. And leave us a review and rating on Apple Podcasts on the App Store. It's the simplest way to help people discover our show. Thanks. St. Louis Public Radio is a member-supported service of the University of Missouri-St. Louis. Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, providing more than 41,000 jobs in the production of wood pallets, railroad ties, white oak barrels, hardwood floors, and more. Details at ChooseWood.com.